Hello viewers, welcome back. So this is part 7C of our series of session on interest parameter calculation. So in this session, we will experience yet another configuration or the parameter that the user can set up based on their own date configuration where they can levy penal interest through the modification during the voucher entry. So for the user to set up the interest calculation during the voucher entry, the user needs to enable the modifying the parameter and also modifying the advanced parameter during the entry. So once we do this in the interest calculation parameter configuration screen, then every time when you are invoicing, you will be in a position to modify or add additional parameters during the voucher entry. So in one of our previous session, we had also seen that how you can change the default interest parameter that you have set in the master during the voucher entry also. So let us go to tally now and experience this feature of interest calculation parameter setting. First, let us go to the party master interest alteration screen. So this is the party master interest alteration screen where we are going to set up the interest calculation parameter in the master. We have set up the interest parameter in the party master as follows. Now we want to have our own interest configuration during the voucher entry. So for that first thing is you have to come here and then set this option override parameter for interest transaction to yes. So I'm going to say yes and the next option is override advanced parameters. So we are going to set this option also as yes enter and now leave this as it is even though you have set this up in the master you can override this parameter during the voucher entry. That is why we have set these two options as yes. So we will save this and then we will go to a transaction. We have made this transaction. Now for us to modify the interest parameter, we will have to modify it after the billwise detail allocation. Let us say that you are not giving any credit period to this party. So make the due date or credit period as blank. Now you will observe the interest parameter is auto populated from the party master. Now since we want to override these parameters during the voucher entry, now you have the option of modifying this parameter. Let us take an example. You want to levy 12% interest, select as always and in the from you will notice that there is one new option that you are viewing here that is date specified during the entry. So you select this date specified during the entry and now what you say is that the invoice we have raised is on 1st of January. Let us say that you want to give him a 10 days of time for him to settle this bill. In case if this party is not settling the bill within 10 days then you would want to charge interest from the day one. So what you do is you say from 1st of January for the next 30 days till 31st January, you would want to charge 12% interest. So again, rounding off is normal. Even after 31st of January, if this party is not making the payment, then you want to charge a penal interest of 2% extra from 31st of January. So you say, if it is still pending as on 31st of January, you would want to levy 14% calendar year on the debit balance. Again, you say always and then you say date specified during the entry. So it will take the opening day of the previous configuration. So from 31st of January till 28th of February, you would want to levy 14% interest. Again, you can do the rounding off, normal rounding off. Let us say now the amount is pending even as on 
28th of February. So you would want to now levy additional 2% interest starting from 20th of February till the current date. So you say I want to charge 16% calendar year on debit balance always again date specified during the entry and if you leave this as blank then it is going to consider till the current date for this financial year enter normal rounding off rounding off limit is one so this way you can configure the way you want it so we will stop here we have made this entry on 1st of january so save this now let us view the interest report for this particular party if you notice here the interest is calculating from 2nd of january we have raised the invoice on 1st of january and since we have specified the date that you want to charge 12 percent interest till 31st of january for 30 days tally is calculated 12 percent interest on the pending amount of 72,000 where the interest amount is 710 rupees. Then you said if the bill is still outstanding or pending even after 31st of January, so from 1st of February till the end of the month for 28 days, instead of 12%, you want to levy 14%. So you will notice that the interest is now calculated based on 14% per annum. Since the bill is still outstanding, so from 1st of March till the current date, if you notice here on the right hand side, you will see the current period in this company is starting from April to 31st of March, which is the last day of the financial year. So now tally is going to calculate interest at the rate of 16% for the month of March on the amount outstanding and the interest amount is calculated. This way you can configure your interest parameter the way you wanted during the voucher entry. Now let me quickly show you a couple of examples for you to understand how the interest parameter you can set it up with different parameter options for you to get your intended interest calculation that you would want to apply. This is scenario one interest calculation after the due date of invoice. Scenario 2, this is past due date including 5 days of grace period. I hope this session would have given you a fair idea of how you can play around with the interest con configuration during the voucher entry also. And also we have seen 3 scenarios where you can set up the interest parameter in such a way so that you can handle multiple scenarios the way you wanted the actual interest needs to be calculated. So in the next session, we will be having the concluding session where we will discuss about in case if the user wants to account this interest in the party ledger, how do we capture this transaction in tally? We will see that. We will also see that how tally handles the interest to be considered using simple interest parameter or compound interest parameter. So thank you all once again for staying till the end. See you all in the next session. Thank you very much.